Dr. Fizz, theoretical physics, what is entropy? You're going to get two answers in this section. One is going to be a macroscopic answer in terms of parameters such as temperature, volume, and pressure. And the other is going to be a microscopic answer, which is in terms of the number of ways that particles can be arranged to get a certain energy level and this is going to be neat to see the connection between macroscopic and the microscopic. Let's look at the uh, first law of thermodynamics which states that the change in energy is equal to the heat flowing into the gas minus the work that the gas does by expansion. Notice that when the gas expands delta W is P delta V and it depends on what path you take in the PV plane in terms of what work that you do. So we indicate this path dependence by putting a slash through these d's, see these differentials, and that means this is an inexact differential. It's not a perfect differential. It's path dependent. There's no such thing as the work of the gas. You have to do some work on the gas, or the gas has to do some work on you. Well, can we fix this so that there is a perfect differential? And the answer is yes. You divide by the pressure. Because see, delta W is P delta V divided by the pressure. You get delta V. You integrate this. It doesn't matter what path you get, you take, because the right-hand side integral will prove it. If you integrate delta V, you'll get dV. And you integrate that, and you put the limits in, you get V2 minus V1. The answer is simply the final volume minus the initial volume. I don't care what volume you had in between. If you had 10 times the volume of the first, you brought it back to V2, and that's what matters. It's the change. Can we fix Q like that? So that Q is a nice variable for the gas, uh, rather than this heat that goes in or heat that comes out. Well, let's see what Q is. Q is delta U plus P delta V, since delta W is P delta V. And Q would be then delta U plus the delta W. So you have the plus sign here. And let's use the ideal gas law. We have delta U would be 3 halves NR delta T. And for PDV, we'll use that uh, the pressure is equal to NRT divided by V. So let's look at this with delta Q. Delta Q is delta U, 3 halves NR delta T plus PdV, and the P is nRT over V, delta V. Now this piece here looks okay. If we were to integrate that, we would get the dt integrates to a t, evaluate the limits, you get t2 minus t1. But this one is the bad one. This one's not good. This t messes things up. But look, you can divide by t, then you'll have just the V and get log of V, and then here if you divide by t, you won't mess this up because it's all t stuff over here, so that'll be log of t, evaluate at the limits, and that's the answer. To divide by t cleans up, fixes this, makes it a perfect differential. I will get a logarithm here in the t variable, a logarithm here at the v variable, and I put the limits of integration in, things will work out nice. So this is called delta s, and that is the change in entropy. That's the good variable, and entropy has a value for the initial state and the final state. If we look at that integral, we can actually do it. We kind of were doing it. You get the log of t, evaluate the limits, so you'll get the log of this ratio and the log of v, and what's in front here of the t integration is 3 halves nr, and that's simply nr. So if we come down here, We'll see the three halves and are in front of the T stuff and the N are in front of the V stuff. That solves it. If we look here at using the DS in our equation with the energy, notice that DS is D delta Q over, over T, so therefore delta Q is T DS, and S is a good variable, we can say DS. And we get this nice result that the change in energy the partial derivative of the energy with respect to the entropy is the temperature. Now let's go to microscopic physics and if we go to microscopic physics 
we see that we can solve for the energy. Uh, here we call energy E, but that's U. U is energy, so we're in good shape. And here, what we're going to do is we're going to solve for DE on the left-hand side of the equation. So we do that by bringing the beta DE on the, on the one side of the equation. So beta DE is the D log of omega minus alpha dn. And then we divide by beta. And now we can take the partial derivative of E with respect to this stuff here, the log of omega. And when we do that, we'll get 1 over beta, and 1 over beta is kt. But now, big discovery here, because if we look up here, the partial of energy with respect to entropy is t. All right, So we'll go ahead and write that here, the partial of energy with respect to entropy is t. And the partial of energy with respect to this stuff here, the log of omega, is equal to kt, which means if I divide both sides by k, then I'll have a t here, and I'll have a k down in here, and s must be k log of omega. That's a profound equation. That relates entropy to the microscopic world where we have the number of ways here that the state can be in. Now look at this other conclusion. When you uh, study uh, chemistry, they tell you if you combine two systems, you add the entropies. Now you can see why. If you have one system with omega-1, another system with omega-2, the number of ways, if you put them both together, will be multiplied. Just like what are the number of ways to, say, flip a coin, say, heads or tails, there's two. Uh, how about throw in a die? Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. Well, suppose you combine this together. Well, then there's two ways to flip the coin, six ways to, to throw the die, so you get 12 ways. See? So here, doing that, the entropy of the system that's combined is the log of the product here, which gives you the entropy of each system. A beautiful result that when you combine two systems, the total entropy is the entropy of one system plus the entropy of the others. Now you can see that the entropy will then want to increase as nature always likes to make sure that omega is maximized. You are basically going to have the entropy of the universe increasing, increasing, increasing. That's one way to state the second law of thermodynamics. That's the second law of thermodynamics. And you could also say that the second law means you must waste some energy or you cannot have a perpetual motion machine.